Here's Ventura, RBI single in the first. Watch out. Look at this. things back up right here and there's Lamont and here we go again I cannot see who is in the middle Bo is in there yeah, somebody drags out Doug Manzolino, Jeff Schwartz. Boy, Mickey Hatcher's got a pretty good cut over his right eye, as you can see right there. Boy, this thing's getting ugly out. Got to get these two teams back to their benches. Well, they'd love to. I hope Yvonne Rodriguez and some of the other guys just stay out of this thing. Yvonne Rodriguez just had that fractured cheekbone. Oh, yeah. So hopefully they will break it up and get everybody back to the benches. Triple into right center field by George Brett. I think Gidry uh, Scooter got in the middle of that and he decided he'd better come out of it. Yeah, that's for sure. You'll remember that Pedro Martinez hit Frank Jeffries. Got him on the right elbow. Jeffries had to leave the game. And now in a bunt situation, you can see this pitch coming right in at Pedro's left oh. knee. And then Pedro gets decked, and here they go. Pedro throws his helmet at Mike Williams and a huge pile out in the middle of the field. Here come the bullpens and the umpires now stand back and take numbers. Down in the middle of that pile, Pedro Martinez and Mike Williams. Expos and Phillies all in the middle of it there. A 
And it's still going on down on that down on the ground. There's Rondell White trying to separate some people. This is where it becomes so dangerous where people can get hurt. Kurt Schilling is in the middle of this. So is Jim Fregosi, Moises Salou. Rondell White's got a hold on Schilling, who has a knot over his right eye, you can see. And there is Pedro. So after the warning by Frank Pulley, Mike Williams came right back at Pedro Martinez. Well, every once in a while, you'll see that where the pitch is made, doesn't hit the batter, knocks him down or brushes him back, and then the pitcher comes back again with the retaliatory pitch. Even after Williams was warned, so they're gone. Here's Hasselman. Oh, and he's plunked. And Hasselman's charging them out. What in the world is that all about? Oh, an ugly brawl. The bullpen's now empty. And Hasselman really jumped all over Mike Mussina. And you just hope somebody didn't get hurt. Now another big scrum to the left of the pitcher's mound. His body's flying all over the place. They finally have separated Hasselman from Mussina. Boy, oh boy. You only hope that the pitcher and the catcher and everybody else involved isn't hurt. And more pushing and shoving now. Now another brawl breaks out. Jay Buter gets involved. Randy Johnson's involved as well with somebody else. Oh boy, this is ugly. This is awful. Now Tino Martinez and Elrod Hendricks are squaring off. And finally order nearly restored. Now bodies fly again. Well this is a shame. It really is a shame. Boy oh boy. An ugly scene here in Camden Yards. And the 46,000 fans here rightfully booing. Sutcliffe and Norm Charlton are really screaming at each other. Everybody trying to keep order in, in place. John McLaren's right in the middle of it, too. Well, McLaren's trying to break it up. Randy Johnson and Sutcliffe now, nose to nose. Well, we may not be finished with this thing just yet. There are some angry folks wearing the visiting colors today in Baltimore. And it really puts an ugly blemish on a fine pitching performance by Mike Messina. The last thing. He wants to do is hit somebody with a five to one lead. Now more words are spoken. Somebody charging in. See what you got to be careful of right here. You get in there, someone's liable to blindside you and take a, a cheap shot. Charlton still wants somebody. Charlton still wants to go after, I think, Mills. Charlton. Oh, and a punch is thrown by the Orioles. Now it's gotten ugly again. We might need to get the law enforcement folks down here to clean this up. This is unbelievable. This is awful. Now umpires are just throwing people out. Yeah, there are going to be a lot of guys ejected from this, and there's going to be a lot of fines. Keep in mind, the coaches are trying to break that thing up as well as they can. Umpires doing the same, but you're just outnumbered. Norm Charlton is. Beside himself, so's Jay Buner. And more skirmishes back and forth. This is ugly. Oh, that's gonna call. Yeah, he's gone. Pitches are gonna empty. That was a frustration pitch on beneath his point. No need for it. 
Darryl Strawberry's after the man. That was a real cheap shot. Umpire's trying to restore a little order. I thought Tino might step out because the crowd wanted a curtain call from Bernie. And Benitez, because of all the frustration. Oh, oh great. boy. They're after him. This is getting ugly now. Now somebody's, you got to break it up. Somebody's going to get hurt. Man, you don't throw a Tito Martinez. The Yankees have shown that before. Ellie Hendricks trying to calm Joe Girardi down. It was Graham Lloyd who broke through the pack. It's warming up again, folks. It, that's Tito. You can see the, the wiser heads ripped in trying to calm things down but Tino I rate and I don't blame him. me neither I mean there's one thing about making a hitter move his feet but when you just blatantly bury one in his back after the guy well, before you hit a home run that's a real cheap shot I mean Bernie just went around the bases didn't show anybody up and the guy to me when a pitcher does that it's showing that he has no confidence he can get people out I know he's frustrated he gave up the home run but this is just going to lead to something else in this series, and maybe right now. Somebody's going to get it for the Orioles, probably tomorrow. Now, all of the umpires, as this spills into the dugout, this is horrible. The umpires now are standing out by the foul line because they can't do anything about it. They're just... In the dugout, that's where the action is right now. Yeah, they've got to get some of the veterans in there and break this up. Look, Eddie Murray's trying to break things up on this side, but right here, right there, and they're holding Tino back. He wants in the pile. Right think, down there. I think Tino is signaling that that might not have been the first time Benitez has done that. Murray and Strawberry right there. Charlton in the middle of it. That's an ugly scene. And the umpires, you know, did what they could to try to prevent it. And they don't want to get in the middle of it and get hammered by an uppercut. So they're just idly standing near the foul line. Joe Torrey right now trying to keep Daryl Strawberry calm. You know, when a pitcher hits somebody, after he gets, he didn't, Tino didn't throw that pitch that was hit for the home right. run. It, it, it's Benitez's his fault. It's the fourth home run he's given up in under 18 innings. To the left side, yawning. Huh. Alex Rodriguez is drilled, and he says something to Bronson Arroyo. And we know what he said. Here we go. Veritek and A-Rod going at it. Schilling is right in the middle of it. Now another fight off to the side. Millar is in it. Nixon is in it. Down to the right. And it was Sturtz. That's who Millar and Nixon got into it with. Today's starting pitcher. It's going to take forever to get this thing straightened out. Well, Sturts the starting pitcher, and obviously both benches will be worn, the manager and the and the pitcher gone. Sturts is bleeding from the left ear. He can foul it back, but it's a good one to look for. Got a fastball and lifts a fly ball in the short left field. Pierzynski wanting to know, am I going? He is going. Here comes a throw by Merton. It is a collision at the plate. And Pierzynski not only bangs into Barrett, bangs onto the plate, and here they go. Posednik getting into it with Barrett. 
And now both dugouts empty behind home plate. I mean, there is some hooking going on in the bottom of two piles. Pierzynski ran right through Barrett and then slammed his hand on home plate. And Barrett came after him. Posednik wound up more involved with Barrett than Pierce. Well, Pena did. reaching on the error by the third baseman Gloss. And now Chan Ho Park with one on and one out shows bunt. And he drops it again down beautifully. Belcher will field and tag him out. Second time that Park has moved the runner. And now some shoving. And a fight breaks out between Belcher and Park. And Park kicks Belcher. And both benches will empty. Well, you have to believe that Belcher said something to Park, who had knocked down Randy Velarde twice in a game already. And it didn't take long for Belcher and Park to square off. On well, first look, it looked like Tim Belcher applied the tag to Chan Ho Park and kind of put his arms around him uh, to prevent any kind of a, a, of a, a collision in the base path there. Perhaps Park misunderstood. I'm not quite sure, but it didn't take long to get started there. Man. Park still very upset. Shields hits crisp and Coco is going to head out. Here we go. And just like that, it turns into fight night at Fenway Park. There was any question it was going to happen. It's just a matter of when it was going to happen. And it happened in right in his first at bat. You know, sometimes it's almost uh, smarted away a while. That time they go right after Coco Chris the first time out. And quite frankly, I was surprised to see Coco go to the mound. He's still fired up as they finally get him out from underneath the pile. I was too. I thought he was going to head down to first base when he first took that first step. But Navarro's still hot out there. The catcher at something. He's trying to get at somebody, and his teammates are holding him back. There were a lot of guys real angry in this brawl. This is what this was one of those uh, just push him around type of kind of things. <laughs> Bottom of the second inning, and Euclid is hit, and Euclid's going to go to the mound. Here we go. Fights on at Fenway. center field way back and gone Carlos Gomez standing there watching the baseball and yeah. now Freddie Freeman joins in with Paul Mahalam as they shout at Gomez around the bases and Brian McCann Mahalam and Freddie Freeman very upset with Carlos Gomez and check out McCann check this out and McCann getting face to face with Gomez he has not stepped on the plate yet now Reed Johnson comes out and lands a right cross to Gomez. And the bench is clearing in Atlanta. Now the bullpens are coming in. And meanwhile, Carlos Gomez still has not stepped on home plate. Nope, and Brian McCann did not allow him to get by him. I mean, it, it kind of got ugly very early. 
And Gomez didn't have the opportunity to step on home plate. He's going to have to do that at some point. Still trying to restrain Carlos Gomez. And Gomez still very irritated, very upset. And the whole team trying to calm him down. Swings and drives one deep to center field. Back goes McCutcheon. He's at the wall. He missed it. Gomez is going to turn second and head for third. And Carlos Gomez is in with a two out triple. And now Garrett Cole and Gomez having some words and the benches are going to empty. What prompted this as Carlos Gomez is throwing punches and now the Pirates are retaliating. We've got a full fledged brawl at PNC Park. The bullpens are empty. Garrett Cole has been escorted away by the umpire. He's going back to the mound. And Carlos Gomez, as he went into third base, was hot about something. Uh, I, I think Cole has changed think, words. I think uh, Cole went over there and said something to him with some colorful language. Back to Ventura. Who says something to Eaton before throwing over to first? And here we go. Now I should point out now that when the last half inning came to an end, the Royals and White Sox were screaming at each other. Samarja and Lorenzo Cain. And we know what happened with those two in the opening series. Right now it appears that most of this is between Lorenzo Kane and Jeff Samarja. They are trying to find different ways to get to one another. And Samarja will not be pitching in this series. I should point out that as the Royals were about to take the field. In the bottom of the seventh inning, there was some jawing going on between the two dugouts. So it didn't help that Ventura started saying something to Adam Eaton after he grounded back to Ventura. But there was a spark that had been triggered before this half inning even began. Uh oh, uh oh, we were out of here. In the face of Brandon Phillips, and we've yet to set the stage about everything that happened. And you get a look at it. For those who may not have known, Brandon Phillips last night to both Jim Day and Hal McCoy made some comments about the Cardinals, saying he hates the Cardinals, and used some less than family language in his descriptions. And as soon as Brandon got to the plate, Yadier Molina got in his face. Now there's Roland and Molina, former teammates. 
this series has been void of bad blood probably until the end of the night last night. And there's Dusty Baker and Tony La Russa. They've had their issues with one another over the years. Well, I'm really stunned that a war of words would actually cause the benches to empty before they get going in the bottom of the first inning. Obviously, some discourse between Yadier Molina and Brandon Phillips sparked the whole thing. We won't know until after a game exactly what was said. Now Scott, Scott Rowan is getting into it. And now he is turning ugly. In it with Chris Carpenter. And Carpenter's the one down there chirping. Carpenter had issues with his own teammates last night. And it is getting really ugly. As we've got punches and kicks. Johnny Cueto, the starting pitcher, is being wrestled away. And this is not good at all because this is the kind of situation where somebody can, can get up, get hurt, get their finger stepped on, and it's just not baseball. I'm hoping that the umpires can get this thing under control and we can get on to playing the game of baseball because nothing is going to be solved by this. But I will tell you one thing. If there is not a lot, a lot of love between these two ball clubs, despite the fact that a lot of players on each team have played for the other team before. Now there's going to be some ejections, and we're going to find out who. And we'll have questions and suspensions and fines to follow as well. And you nailed it, Chris. It was Chris Carpenter who seemed to be kind of in the middle of some of the worst of it. Well, if he's not whining about his own teammates, he's whining about One somebody out. else. David Ortiz, the batter. 94 and inside. He's going to try to come in again. 2 and 0. Oh. Inside again, and Ortiz takes exception to this. Third time he's come in. All three have been fastballs, and the benches are going to empty. And Ortiz has a pretty good idea what Greg's trying to do. The Red Sox just been bombing away. Now the question is, would they throw David Ortiz out of the game for making a move toward the mound? We're going to hand out warnings, which seems reasonable. 3-0 pitch. David lifts it in the air to shallow right. And oh, here we Ortiz. Go. Here Ortiz we go. going out, and it's time to fight. Greg said something to Ortiz as he popped out, wanted him to run, and then Ortiz ran right out at him. Oh, hit again. And Quentin didn't like that. And oh, look at this. this. Brinky challenged them, and we've got a serious melee going here at Petco tonight. And now the bullpen's empty, and the uh, 50 players on the field plus coaches going at it. And Quinton and Grimke down at the bottom of the pile. Carlos hit two days ago on the wrist by Belisario, and he gets hit again and didn't like it a bit, obviously. And he's ready for more. Take a look. Hits him. Grimke. He, uh, looks like Quentin makes the first move, but Greggy just held his ground. A.T. Ellis, the catcher, coming out to uh, tear Quentin away. And Quentin, a former football star in high school. And fortunately, at least to this point, it doesn't appear anyone was injured. You just get spiked with nothing else. Yeah. With all the humanity climbing and falling well, and spiking. You know, he Greggy took a good blow to his left side. Whoa. The free is hit by the pitch. In watching what they're doing, it, it might have hit his nose. His eyes are watering. Ian Kennedy this year, wow, he, he has been a little wild. He's hit seven batters. 
Well, the crowd sees him put the helmet on, and he goes to first. And did that hit him? I think it went behind him and hit him. Oh, wow. Don Baylor out there. Ian Kennedy. That's Kirk Gibson who is really ticked off. Chicken. Mm-hmm. All right, all things reasonably quiet. The pens go back. Granky, a good hitter, but he has grounded out and popped a bunt up. And he is hit. And I think Kennedy's thrown out of the game. Wow. Holy mackerel. And now they're liable to get angry after that. Uribe is mixing it up a little bit. He's in the middle. That's Belisario that went down on one knee. And now Mark McGuire and Kirk Gibson and Matt Williams is trying to restrain Mark McGuire. And Matt Williams keeps saying no, no. And McGuire's getting hot. Don Baylor is right in the middle of things. And they're pushing Don away. Josh Beckett was restrained. It looked like he and Baylor were having some words. Now there's about a little more ready to erupt. Puig is right there. There is Puig hollering at anybody who will listen, even those who won't. Remember, he was hit in the nose earlier. Now they're pulling Mark McGuire away. Now Williams kind of slapped Cruz on the back as if say, okay, get over it, let's calm down. But Ian Kennedy, I know, is thrown out of the game. Fernandez, left field, it's deep! Took a peek at it. It's his first one. Chris Johnson is coming after Fernandez. That's who was jumping at him then. And now the bench is empty. They're on him for taking a peek. He stood at the plate and watched. I understand that. Chris Johnson came charging from his third base spot after Fernandez who was talking to McCann and now the bullpen's empty as well. Johnson being separated. You see Chad Qualls has a hand on him. So that tells us Rich who it was that was getting the attention of Jose last inning. It was Chris Johnson. And then Jose set it off by standing at the plate and admiring the home run. Johnson is still going nuts right now. Beltre ducked off a tough hop. And the throw is wide down the line. And there we got a final second. The 
Batista picked on the wrong guy as Odor came right at him. And we got the benches. The benches empty in that. There's some pent-up emotion going on out of Globe Live Park. Well, Bautista got the worst of that exchange. Well, the fans may have been waiting since last October, but it looks like the Rangers in... Blue Jays were waiting since last October. There were some serious. You don't normally see that kind of fight at a major league game, but you did today. Yeah, generally, it's a lot of posture. There was no posture in that. No, sure wasn't. I'll tell you one thing, Rubin didn't waste any time getting a few swings in on Bautista either. Bautista, Bautista might be hurt. He could be. Rubin popped him real good. Well, he picked the wrong guy to slide into second base hard on. Yeah, Jeff Bannister right in the middle of things. Oh, that's still a volatile situation. Yeah, it yes, it is. I think they're going to call a double play for Bautista sliding beyond the bag and interfering with Odor's ability to make a double play. That's Lance Barrett, the third base umpire, talking to uh, Bautista. All of a sudden, this ballpark is filled with electricity. John Gibbons doesn't want any part of Bannister either. And now DeMarlo Hale getting uh, an explanation. Here's the close-up. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of slide they're trying to eliminate. Yep. And I think Odor, you saw Odor dropping down. Rudin said, nope. Whoa! <laughs> I think Bautista got all he could handle with that. Odor's now two for five today. Wow. That's some pretty solid contact right there. Yep. And going on the field after you've been ejected from a ball game during the ball game, I gotta think that's gonna be a pretty hefty fine on whatever on top yeah, of whatever he's gonna be fine. Or a suspension. Gibbons and Bannister continuing to go at it pretty well. well that is all taken care of. Jeff Bannister today. Show of emotion as he walked back to the Ranger dugout after the field was clear. He's now all gone six up, six down, not seven. We'll go ahead and go. Machado's last at bat, but Ventura missed inside two times. And at the time, we chalked it up to Ventura trying to get the ball off the plate as the Orioles scored five runs. With the first nine hitters against Ventura. 
But he clearly was not just trying to pitch inside to Machado with what he did on the first pitch to him here in the fifth. <laughs> 